This is Copilot Explains, Episode 5, Async and Await in Python. You'll start understanding it soon. Uh, explain this to me, won't you? It's all inside the code. Hey everyone, I'm Pamela Fox, and I chose to talk about Async and Await in Python, two constructs that were added back in Python version 3.5. Even though they were added way back in 2015, I only personally started using them in the last year. But now I find that I cannot live without them and I really appreciate the benefits they bring. So I thought it'd be a great topic for an explain video. If you want to follow along, my GitHub repo is right here. And now let's get into it. Here we are inside VS Code and I've got this Python file already open that I've started working on. The goal of this Python file is to communicate with the ChatGPT API using the OpenAI SDK. So moving down here, after we you know, set up the authentication to the SDK, I've got this function here that makes a call to ChatGPT to ask it to complete this conversation. In this example here, <laughs> what I'm trying to do is something very practical so that I've got a four-year-old kid and the four-year-old kid doesn't want to sleep and just wants to talk about ponies and unicorns and dragons all the time and wants me to make up stories. And I'm getting a little tired of making up so many stories. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to help me write those stories. For my system prompt, I tell it that it's a, you know, you're a tired parent trying to get your child to sleep. And for my user message, I say, okay, please make up a story about some creature who lives in some location. And these are parameters that I send into the function. And so I send that to ChatGPT and then return the response. I try to call it down here. So I say response equals generate response. Let's go ahead and try to call this line. Okay, well, what I immediately see here is a warning. Coroutine generate response was never awaited. This is the sort of warning you're going to see a lot when you start working with async and await. Let's go ahead and select this and actually ask Copilot to explain it and see if it can give us a good, good explanation here. So it says that this error message means that the coroutine function was defined but not awaited. This can happen when a coroutine function is not properly called with an await statement. So let's just click on this follow-up question here. How can I properly call a coroutine function with an await statement? So it says that you need to use the await keyword followed by the coroutine function call. And here is an example. So it says in your case, you need to make sure that the generate response function is defined as a coroutine function and then call it with await like this. Okay, so there's two things we need to do. The first thing is we need to make sure it's defined as a coroutine function. Well, what is a coroutine function? Is that different from a function? So here it gives us an example here. It says it's defined using the async def syntax. So that's actually all we need is async def. As soon as Python sees async def, this is now considered to be a coroutine function, or you could also just call it a coroutine. So it's a function that is a special kind of function called a coroutine and it must be awaited. Uh, so you can see the example here says response equals await. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here, but now I get another error and I actually get this just even with my IntelliSense where it says await statement is outside of a function. Huh, okay. This is another issue is that you can't simply use await outside of a function. You have to call it inside of an async event loop. We can even ask Copilot to fix this code for us. So I'll right click on the selected code and say Copilot fix this. And Copilot passes in the error messages from my various linters and then it tries to fix it so that it doesn't have that error. Take a look at the diff here. So it brings in, it imports the async IO package, which is great. That's from the standard library and that's a package that can run coroutines in various ways. Then it wraps this call inside another coroutine, async def. It prints out the, something from the response. And then finally it uses async io.run to call this coroutine. So I'm going to accept this. And then I'm just gonna make some tweaks. So I'm gonna bring this import up to the top just to keep everything sorted and clean. And then I'm also gonna just print out the entire response so I can see all of it. Let's give it a run. Okay, so that worked. Let's check out this story. We can see it inside this chat completion object. And we can see there was a dragon named Draco, fearsome scales, and it looks like maybe he became friendly and he had some 
tea. <laughs> and the dragon was never alone again. Oh, I love those stories. All right. Thank you, ChatGPT. You might be thinking, what's the benefit of async? Why put in so much effort to call a function? Well, we need async coroutines if we want concurrency, the ability to pause one coroutine while it's waiting for I.O. and then start up another coroutine. It's particularly helpful when our I.O. calls are quite slow, like ChatGPT calls that can take several seconds. We can try to demonstrate that in this simple example by making multiple ChatGPT calls concurrently. Let me go ahead and ask Chat. Can I call multiple async coroutines at once? We'll just say that. Okay, it says I can do this using asyncio.gather. It takes in multiple coroutines as arguments and returns a future that completes when all the coroutines have completed. And we see a nice little example here. Let's go ahead and see if Copilot can do this. So I'm gonna start a code chat and say, call generate response multiple times using asyncio.gather and print out the results. Let's see if it can do that. That looks good, so I'll accept. Let's try this out and see if we can get three stories. Okay, I definitely see a mermaid here because there's Marina. I see a dragon and I see a unicorn. So we saw the unicorn story, then the dragon story, then the mermaid story. So they came out in the same order I asked, but that doesn't necessarily always have to be the case that they come out in the same order. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some print statements in here so we can track what's going on. Uh, so we're gonna say generate response for creature in location, just F string that. And then I wanna know when it ends. So I'm gonna say print got response for creature in location and F string that. Okay, because what I want to show is that there it is actually happening at the same time, these calls. Let's run this again. So what you can see is that it you know sent off these requests all in a sequence here. So it first sent off the unicorn request and then it sent off the dragon request before getting a response for the unicorn. So that's really interesting because that's not how it would have worked if these were you know normal functions. Uh, so it sent off all these requests and then it got back the request. And you actually see this time it got back the requests in a different order. So we see the dragon, then the mermaid, then the unicorn. And that's something interesting that can happen when you're using async and await is that, you know, things could get fulfilled in different orders. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind if you actually were assuming some sort of sequence. And that's what's really, really cool about async and await is the ability to, you know, send off multiple things to have concurrency, uh, especially when we're writing user facing web apps. To make a web app in Python that supports async, we need to use a async compatible web framework like FastAPI. One way you could get started with FastAPI is to ask Copilot to create a workspace for you. So slash create workspace for a simple fast API app with a single route. Here, Copilot proposes a directory structure for a simple fast API app and also showcases some of the code. So you can see here is what it looks like to have an app with a single route. And this is where I would put the call to generate the actual story. And I would change this to take some parameters. And then it even generated some tests, which I love because I think that all apps should be tested. So we could actually click this button here, create workspace, and it would create this new workspace here. And you can see it opened up in a brand new VS Code window. So I could start working here on my fast API app to call asynchronous APIs. I hope you have a better understanding of async and await after this video. If you have any async resources that have helped you, please post them in the chat, or you could even post your own explanation of async. I am still learning more every day. Just yesterday, I discovered a feature added to Python 3.11 called Task Group. It's an alternative to gather, and I used it to asynchronously make 100 concurrent calls. So cool. Let's keep learning together.